think I've always sort of been involved with the arts just because of how, you know, the family used music and reading. Um, but I have never worked directly for an arts organization until um, I worked, headed up the Australia Business Arts Foundation. But I, in working in the corporate sector, I was always involved in marketing. And it's ironic, because marketing's about creating. It's about the future. It's about what can be. So uh, when I would um, be responsible for building the brand or for internal communications or for client um, development, the, the arts were always a great way to do it. You could always... Um, uh, have people gather around some element of the arts. For example, at uh, Siemens, we sponsored the awards for artists graduating from university and then showed their work out at the headquarters. And what that did was have huge conversations go on about innovation. It had huge conversations go on about what does it take to create? And this is amongst engineers who are creating railroads and new mobile phones and those kinds of things. And, and I think it was very, very productive. When I made the decision to join James Strong to head up the Australia Business Arts Foundation, I at least had a sort of a feel for what the sector was about. But boy, did I have a lot to learn. <laughs> I think one of the most interesting things about my job right at the moment is with the national cultural policy being discussed, um, you have the merging of those people who've had you know, 50, 60 years in, involved in arts and culture in Australia, merging with those people who are coming you know, into it fairly fresh. And they have a completely different view. And as all uh, youth are in their generation, they could care less how it's been done. And so from that we're getting all kinds of great innovation, different thoughts about it, and they're getting a voice in this instead of getting sort of pushed out to the other side. So you're finding that uh, the artist of 40 years ago went about doing their work in a different way than the artist of today does. And this is giving that difference oxygen, and it's giving it a chance to be heard and a chance for us to consider in how we go forward with the National Cultural Policy. It's always too that has got to be one of the toughest questions for someone who's totally obsessed with reading. Um, but I can, I can name pretty easily right off the top of my head one of my favorite all-time books, which is A Hundred Years of Solitude by Gabriel García Márquez. And I was a Spanish major undergrad, so um, I read that in Spanish, which was absolutely amazing because it's just full of symbolism and, you know, um, spiritualism and layers and layers and layers of drama and, and you know, uh, Latinness. So that, that's a book that stays with me forever. Recently I read a book called uh, Room by Emma Donoghue, which I actually woke myself up in the middle of the night so I could finish. It was just so compelling. It was just an incredible book. I love books like that. But I'm also reading uh, quite a lot. Uh, I'm reading 1984, George Orwell again. Uh, and that's scaring the pants off me, actually. That's quite an amazing book. Um, and when you read it as a young person, it's a completely different book than when you read it as um, an older person. But um, I I'm just an avid reader, and I read all the time. So to ask me what my three ultimate favorites are, one day is going to be completely different the next day. Late for me. I learned you know, a while back, but it was really important. And it was about, it's not about you. It's about, um, it's about your team, it's about the culture you're creating. And, and that's where I think it's really important to ask questions and to be respectful of the people that you work with, to get their input. I mean, I think you do have to have people understand who you are too. You have to expose yourself. Um, in, in how you make decisions and, and what you think your responsibilities are and what their responsibilities are. But that doesn't mean you have to do it, you know, you have to do it really hardcore. You can do it gently and have a little fun about it. And it's taken me a while and the Australia Council job to sort of learn a lot more about that. Um, but I'm the kind of person who can be told that way ahead of time, but I still have to learn it by experience. And so in the end, you know, really, you can tell me all you want, but what you need to do is give me the experience so that I learn it through experience. Having a career plan, there's pluses and minuses to having a career plan. And I think sometimes people are kind of surprised to hear me say, I think it's good to have a career plan but I've spent my career deviating from my career plan. I think you have to be flexible 
uh, and realistic about the opportunities that are there. I think you should have an idea. And for artists, I think it's really important. So you're a dancer, you dance for a period of years. What do you do after you don't dance? Um, I, d I do think you have to plan sort of A, sequentially, but B, on a contingency basis. So, um, but I also think you have to be open to things. I mean, you know, was broadband there? a few years ago and how does that change what you're about? I mean, I didn't say that five years into my career I'm going to move overseas, but the opportunity came there and I could fit it into what I was about. So it's a bit of flexibility, but yes, I do think you need to think through uh, uh, on a sequential basis uh, and, and, and guide yourself towards something. Um, but I and, and I think you have to sort of say, what if I broke my legs or, you know, my lips fell off and I couldn't do trombone anymore? Uh, what would I do instead? I always think that way. But I also don't nail myself down to anything if, if I don't have to, before it's time. It's true.